In this video, we want to look at finding the area enclosed by a polar curve. In this case, the curve f of theta equals 4 plus 3 sine theta. So we have a picture of the curve here, and this is the formula for finding the area in a curve. I'm not going to go through deriving that, but if you remember, uh, if you've done the deriving of this formula, it's based on this idea that we're going to cut this curve into sectors. All right? We're going to cut it into sectors and we're going to add up all the areas of those sectors. So we need to know where to start, what theta to start at, and what theta to finish at. This is d theta here. Now, for those of you guys that have done some polar graphing, to get the total area inside here, you might be pretty comfortable saying 0 to 2 pi, especially since we've got sine theta and we know that the period of sine is 0 to 2 pi. But if you're not sure, you know, it always helps to just do a little chart, plug in some numbers, and it gives you an idea of what's happening with the graph. So let's do that. And this is going to be important when you do more complicated types of area. So if we let theta equal 0, we know the sine of 0 is 0. So this is going to come out to be 4. So this is our starting spot. But, so to speak, if we want, we could let theta equal 0 would give us this point. If theta is pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we're going to end up with 7. So that's going to take us up here. So we can see the curve. We could do some values between 0 and pi over 2, but it's kind of mapping out this way here. If theta is pi, the sine is 0 again, so we get 4. So this is when theta equals uh, pi. Now I'm graphing this when I say theta equals pi and I'm doing this point, I'm talking about graphing it polar, even though there's rectangular on um, a uh, grid shown. The point um, r is 4, theta is pi, would be rotating pi degrees and stepping out 4 units uh, on that pi out value right there. If we go to 3 pi over 2, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so we're going to have 4 minus 3, which is 1. Remember, we're going 3 pi over 2, forward 1, so we're going this direction. And it's looking pretty promising that we're going to be able to map out this curve from 0 back to 2 pi and get this whole curve mapped out. All right. And so what we're doing then when we do this area is we're adding up the area of these slices from theta equals 0 to 2 pi, these infinite slices. And so by the time we get down here and we're, we're getting to thetas, you know, where we're getting close to adding up all of the 2 pi, all the way around, right? All right, so to set up our integral then, we know the area is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half times r squared, back to the formula, r squared d theta. So this is your r, f of theta is r, so 4 plus 3 sine theta d theta. Now, from this point, it's just a big old integration problem. Oop, forgot to move my squared, r squared, there we go. Now it becomes a much more difficult integration problem, which is why I wanted to do this example, because the integration is a little bit tedious. So. Um, Let's walk through it. First thing we're going to want to do is foil out this binomial. So 4 squared is 16. And then we're going to get 4 times 3 sine, which is 12. But we'll double that because we'll have two of those terms. You can write it out and foil it and multiply it if you like. And then 3 sine squared will give me 9 sine squared and d theta. All right. Now. We can take this half and bring it out front, that's fine. If you know about integration, this sine squared is going to cause us some issues here. So what we want to do is we're going to have to use an old friend, an old uh, trig identity friend. Now, of course, we've got cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, but that would just give us a cosine squared. And the thing that's causing us the problem is the squared here. So you want a formula that's going to reduce it down to something to the first power. And your friend here is the double angle formula for cosine 2 theta, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. There's that sine squared we need. So if I solve this for sine squared theta, I end up with 1 minus cosine 
2 theta over 2. Or you could write it out, which might be helpful with our integration, as 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is multiply or substitute this sine squared in there. Now this has 9 times sine squared, so I'm going to multiply these by 9 and distribute that in there. Oh, let's pull this half out in front of this integral. And so now I've got 16 plus 24 sine theta plus 9 times this business over here. So 9 times a half minus 9 times a half cosine 2 theta d theta. Okay, well, we could combine these constants together. Guess we might as well do that. And then we can finally get to our integration. Let's see, 16 plus 9 halves is, uh, if that's 4 and a half, so it would be 20 and a half. You could write that as 41 halves, I guess. And 24 sine theta minus 9 halves cosine 2 theta. I should put that in parentheses also. Okay, let's do some integration here. All right. All right, I rewrote this a little bit. Back to how we had it with our constants combined. So we've got a couple things that are fairly easy to integrate right here. Um, this one, we have a 2 theta. So we might think about we're going to have to do a little u substitution and balance it out with a half. And we'll, we'll write that when we get there. All right, so the integral of 41 over 2 is going to be 41 over 2 theta. Remember, because we're doing this d theta. And the integral of sine is negative cosine. So let's just do the negative here. So for the integral of cosine, we know that that is sine. So, but we have a 2 theta here. So we need to, I'll just write this as a little u substitution. So if I let u be 2 theta, then I know du is 2 d theta. Or I need 1 half du to equal d theta. So I have to balance this out with a half. All right, I'm going to have to multiply this by a half when I do this integration right here. All right, so I'm going to have this 1 half and then the 9 halves. Then the integral of cosine is sine and 2 theta there. And then we're going to integrate that from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so again, this half right here came from the fact that this is a 2 theta. And it comes from this when you're doing this little u sub right here. Okay, it's like undoing the chain rule. All right, I think we're in the home stretch. Let's see. So now we're going to plug in 2 pi and 0. So I'm going to have 1 half times 41 over 2 times 2 pi minus 24. Let's just do this in our head. The cosine of 2 pi is 1 minus 9 fourths. That right here, 9 fourths. So the sine of 4 pi is the same as the sine of 2 pi, which is the same as sine of 0, which is 0. Okay, minus, now we'll plug in 0. Well, that's going to be 0 minus the cosine of 0 is 1, so that's going to be 24. The sine of 0 is 0, so all that's going to be 0. And now we just have to clean this up, and we're almost there in the home, home stretch. Let's see, these are going to cancel out. So that's going to give me 41 pi minus 24. That's gone. That's gone. Plus 24. Oh, that's convenient. So those go away, and I end up with 41 over 2 pi. That's pretty exciting. Kind of neat how it ended up with a pi in there. So that is the area inside this curve, right, all the way around, and inside this curve is 41 pi, or 
20 and a half. All right, I hope that helped. And uh, have fun with polar curves. The integration is the most difficult part sometimes with these polar curves and also finding your bounds. So check those things and you should be good to go.